Okay, this is for Radioactive Dolphin 1. Your question is, um, how do you optimize your training routine, which you laid out? You also want to, your foot got some, you want to focus on your weak, weak foot, and you also mentioned some stamina, right? You want to improve stamina a little bit. Um, the thing that tremendously, right, that really improved my stamina like crazy was learning how to breathe, right? I played soccer for 27 years, and I, you know, I thought, you know, you think you know, but it turned out I didn't. So I think this would really help you um, uh, in, increase or right, change the trajectory of your training, learning how to breathe. You got to check out the TED Talk by Dr. Vranich, V-R-A-N-I-C-H. It's called How to Breathe, and um, it'll it'll help you figure out, you know, if you're a vertical breather or a horizontal breather. And just, you know, it's, I noticed not only did it help me improve endurance, stamina, it, it, I found that I've been calmer, that I can be calmer in high pressure situations on and off the field. And that in general, my, uh, my, like my calmness and be just being able to be, uh, be relaxed has, uh, deeply improved. So that's, that's an aside. Um, so that's step one. Step two is, right. Let's think about your training schedule. You have a training schedule uh, laid out right through the week and it's balanced in a sense that, you know, it's balanced that, um, you know, you have, a, a, you have some good ideas about what you, you know, you're aware of things you want to improve on and you're working towards that. But um, there are some things that we can do to kind of tweak this where you're going to maximize, right, and get more bang for your buck. Um, where should we start? Um, there are three things that all soccer players have to do well at the fundamental level, right? And I'm sure you could guess them. They are juggling, dribbling, passing, or shooting. And you might have a weak foot, but actually ch changing how you f view your weak foot will actually rapidly um, allow you to unlock your abilities with your, with your feet. So there's a little trick. I want you to pick your favorite right-footed player, and then you want to pick your favorite left-footed player, and you want to name your feet after them. And what this will allow you to do is, instead of thinking, you know about your feet, one foot in a positive light and one foot in a negative light, you kind of turn them into your superheroes, your feet into superheroes. And what this is gonna do is um, just your mindset alone, it'll kind of unlock the capabilities, right? Because if you, it, it, it's almost like the mind is a powerful thing and the things that you tell your body, it will listen to. So if you start to convince yourself, right, Tony Robbins did this thing where um, he's, you know, when he was just starting out his career and he was feeling very down about himself and feeling un, unpowerful, he would repeat, he would repeat, repeat this phrase, he would um, do uh, incantations. He would say, I'm, I'm invincible, I'm invincible, or, uh, or I'm unstoppable, I'm unstoppable. And then he would wake up and he, after repeating this over and over and over, he would wake up with a new sense of purpose and a new sense of passion, right? Saying this before bed, saying this when he woke up. So now when he started to doubt, there was no doubt in his mind. And when he focused on something, he would achieve that because he kept on telling himself, I am, you know, I am uh, unstoppable. So you kind of want to almost do develop this mantra for your feet. It's like you have your left foot, you have your right foot. And then if you want to think about them as, you know, you got to ele elevate them, you got to elevate the way that you think about them in your mind so that they can rise to the occasion and with perpetual, with a perpetual practice routine and with some relaxed juggling and, and, tr and juggling, dribbling, as well as passing or shooting, you, you will completely change the way that you think about them um, for the better, I believe. So that's a little trick that you can use. The next thing, right, you have, you have like, you have some days you're going to do, you know, a, a leg workout that's heavy and some days it's upper body. And then, you know, some, one day you have, you have written down bike and some, you know, some days you have a, um, 
you know, whatever it is, but there are uh, a few things that you can do every single day that will only improve your training and you could do them um, inf infinitely, right? So, well, maybe not infinitely because you have limited time in the day, but there are things that you can do that can frame you frame your days in the sense that they can always, they're gonna boost your testosterone, they're gonna reduce cortisol, and they're gonna strengthen your core and improve your balance and your timing and your rhythm, right? Those are the, those are the bread and butter of the things that will have very low recovery time, so it's basically very little time invested and all upside. So now you can start to reduce your, your training time, overall training time, tremendously and just t take action on the things that give you more bang for your buck. The things I'm thinking about in particular are hanging, right? If you search Edel Portal hanging, he'll give you more information. That's P-O-R-T-A-L, hanging. What hanging is gonna do is align your spine with gravity. It's gonna help traction your joints from your fingertips, right? All the way through your whole body, right? Your body's connected from fingertips to your toes. So anytime you're hanging from your hands or anytime you're hanging from your feet or your knees, you're gonna start to traction, traction your body um, and this is gonna help you develop um, full body strength. Right? Think about how strong monkeys are. All they're doing is hanging, they're squatting, and they're doing monkey things with their monkey friends. So, um, and they're also out, outside, right? So, um, the more, anytime you wanna begin or end a workout, you could always begin or s begin a workout or end a work workout with hanging, and that's gonna um, decompress your spine and boost your testosterone and minimize your cortisol, which is gonna help you feel better in a very short period of time. Like it's gonna put you in a good, um, your physiology, it's gonna improve your, your wellness, your overall wellness, right? And that's right, full body, full body strength. Like you start to, if you hang from your fingers, right? I think Peter Atia, the doctor who talks about longevity, one of the ways he measures the long, someone's potential longevity, longevity is how long they can hang from their hands for. So it's actually a, a super powerful indicator on overall um, sh strength and future health span and lifespan. But that's neither here nor there. All I'm saying is uh, spend a few, uh, if you're not already incorporating hanging into your daily routine, that might be something you wanna consider. The next thing is, um, the, it's called the torture twist. I noticed you like to spend some time in the gym and that's perfectly fine, but you wanna make sure that you're doing the, the th right? There's a quote that goes, the things that matter the most come before the things that matter the least. If you have a whole bunch of rocks and you have to fit them into a vessel, you can't start, you can't start with the sand and then the pebbles because then the big rocks won't fit. You wanna put the big rocks in first and with this analogy, I mean that you always got to prioritize the most important things in your workout in the beginning or in the beginning of your day, right? You got to take care of the most important things first, first things first. And first things first is hanging. Second thing is core, right? Core strength is huge. You can, core, it's, it's almost not impossible to overtrain your core, but um, the chances that you're over training your core based on what you're talking about, um, I would say I'm 94% certain that you're not currently over training your core, even if you trained it for an hour each day, just your core. So there's one ab exercise in particular, it's called the torture twist. It's from a book called Underground Secrets to Faster Running by Barry Ross. There's multiple variations. You wanna learn all the variations because then you could start to do it at home, you could do it at the park, you could do it at the gym, and you could do it on a you know variety of equipment so you're not limited to just, oh, I can only do the torture twist at the gym, right? So you wanna, you wanna have deep, deep understanding of all the variations, so you say, oh, I could do it like this, or I could do it like this, or you, know, you wanna be flexible because even if you don't feel like going to the gym, you could still have, you know, you could still ex you know, execute the exercise effectively at your home and still get a lot of bang for your buck and not waste time in the commute. You could just wake up, you know, hydrate, get moving a little bit, and then start executing these, uh, these highly effective and efficient exercises. So that's the torture twist. That's the next thing you wanna 
uh, check out. Um, okay, so core. Oh, the second reason why it's so effective, especially for soccer players, is because it's an isometric hold. All that means is instead of right muscles when they when they uh, you know an oversimplified definition of when you're when you tear muscles, that's what's going to make them stronger later because you tear them through repetitions and. And that's going to increase um, strength, right? It strength decreases after you exercise, and then it's going to rebuild. So you're going to have a, it's going to go down. Strength goes down, and then it's going to, it's going to raise higher than your baseline, right? You go higher. So um, this is this is not going to encourage uh, mass through repetitions or through weights. This is going to encourage strength. Right, uh, the hold is going to be a, it's going to be a strength hold, which is going to minimize uh, muscle mass, which is going to help you. They say uh, the reason why some people, even despite working their legs and their whole body, don't get faster is because they have weak obliques, and because they lose. Right, you can't transfer the energy that your legs create because you have weak obliques. Your energy is spilling from your obliques. So this is exercise will target not only the core, but the obliques, and that's why it's super effective. Um, the next thing you wanna spend more time doing, and this is daily, right? Um, every time you go for a walk, right? Anytime you go, you walk, and your foot leaves the ground, right? The second that one foot leaves the ground, that's balance. This is true balance right here, and that's defined in the book uh, by Jim Klopman, inventor of the slack, the slack block and the slack bow. Right, he's done uh, so much research on this, right? Um, so anytime that you're incorporating balance routine into being at the gym or wherever you are, and incorporating balance training is gonna have high, it's gonna produce unreasonable results, right? Because it's gonna improve uh, stability shooting, it's gonna pre prevent injuries, it's gonna prevent getting pushed off the ball. Um, um, you know, it, there's so much Right, balance is influencing everything in everything that you do aside from lying down. So it's super important, and most people don't know how to train it or train it train it effectively. So um, incorporating one-legged balance at the gym using whatever balance tools, Bosu ball, foam pad, even you know e even working. I mean, it's it's inferior, but you know you could stand on balancing on a um, on a Swiss ball, a big bouncy ball, or balancing on a medicine ball, and going through some uh, like you know you could go through some squat, some squat, um, some routine, uh, squat routine, or some variations. Basically, moving around on on balance while in one legged, preferably one legged balance or two legged balance is gonna help you. Um, Gain an under, it's going to improve your proprioception. Proprioception is understanding where your body is in space and time, right? And also looking in a mirror will help you, uh, will help optimize that. All right, so all, all I'm trying to say is spending a few minutes working on one legged balance in any capacity is going to help improve your overall um, play and effectiveness on the field because when you start to understand where your body is on a deeper level, now you can become more explosive. Now you can transfer weight more effectively, right? And if you can transfer more, more, your weight more effectively, you have a better understanding of how you're, how, where you are in the field and, and, and how is everything is moving. You can be more in harmony with your surroundings, right? You could be more agile. You can, you know, you can sh shield the ball more effectively or kind of, you just become more dangerous because you have a you have a more right you're you're more um, nimble and you can flow effectively and you know get balls out of the air and land you know land better. It's just it's it's very um, the more balanced you are, the more dangerous you are in the field. Right, that's all that's all I'm saying. What else? Okay, so those are some things that you want to incorporate. Um, Oh, let me give you one more for the gym or, or in terms of, of strength and then we can get into skill. The last thing I want to include is most most gyms have treadmills, right? You, you could argue that. Like 90, 95% of most gyms have treadmills. One of the most effective warm-up and or cool-downs that you can execute 
and that's also going to protect your body from from your toes up is called ben, is called ROKP. ROKP stands for reversing out of knee pain, but it's not just knee pain. It's going to put your feet when you start going backwards, or you put your feet in this um, in this. Um, it's going to right each this step right here. And how I'm going down like this to walk backwards, that's gonna start to do a, that's prehab rehab for your whole body. Right, when you start to do this, this is gonna strengthen your toes, which is gonna strengthen your Achilles and your feet and your ankles, and that strength is gonna transfer all the way up through your knees, your hips, and even through your spine and your upper back, right? It's all connected. So, um, the recommendation or the suggestion is spend Two, two to four minutes, five minutes walking backwards on a treadmill, or you could pull a sled in reverse, right? Just get used to the mo movement, even even becoming aware. I see people at this college gym down the road, they're doing sled work and they're completely disconnected from their hands. Their hands are doing either doing nothing or their hands are, uh, are, are, are th their hands are not really out of, out of like eight out of eight, hockey players doing sled work one of them one of them was using his hands to pump while walking backwards and it wasn't even it wasn't um it wasn't good technique i mean that's neither here nor there and who, who, who am i to criticize because you know what do i know but uh most of the players doing the walking in reverse didn't have a connection between each step and how their hands were moving. So that's just something to keep in mind, right? When you're doing this ROKP work, your your, your body's connected. So make it make it flow at whatever feels right for you. So write the suggestion, uh, ROKP, and that's by Ben Patrick. If you want to check out more more uh, more on him. Um, the last thing I'll suggest is that you know you you you, you wrote the word bike. You want to include, right, if you have the opportunity to bike to work, bike to school, bike around town, um, right, like, this is going to help improve your stamina and endurance. So it's like, I think Mr. Money Mustache talks about anyone who doesn't have a, a bicycle and has the opportunity to bike is almost, is like crazy. If you think about the benefits that riding your bike around can create and also, right, how much money we waste on, like, you know, motorized gas powered vehicles that kill us while we're sitting down. It's like, there's so many reasons for why you should bicycle more around town as long as you're being safe, right? You want to be, watch out for cars and stuff. So, um, so you wrote bike as if it's a workout, but I think this should be, you should incorporate bicycling more into your daily routine if possible, right? I don't know you, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. And if it's even right when I went to high school, my high school i was forced to go to a different high school my sophomore year and it would have taken me three hours by bicycle right so that wouldn't have been feasible right so it's there's you know i don't know if this will work but i'm just saying it, it's an idea okay now let's talk about skills um if you want to develop your 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 let's call your left foot messy and let's call your right foot cristiano if you want to develop Messi and Cristiano effectively, right? You want to invest in a kick trainer. Most people who have a who have a problem using their non-dominant foot usually don't have a kick trainer, right? This is a proven tool that's used by clubs all over the world: uh, AC Milan, Sevilla, um, Ajax, right? Wesley Schneider talks about using kick trainers. You can make this ball your, you can make this yourself with a size one ball and some rope. Or you could invest twenty twenty four dollars, and you, you could get this on Amazon. Um, and it's just gonna again help improve timing, rhythm, coordination, awareness. Right, you're checking out the field, you're seeing time and space, your heads up, so you can make good decisions. And each time you strike the ball, this is like working on a pass, or this is working on a shot. I think this kick trainer is more effective than a wall or a rebounder because. Again, you could bring it anywhere you are. I tell this story a lot. I brought this ball on a rope to France and just walked around the streets of Paris. I must have got 5,000 touches effortlessly. Effortlessly is key. And you could play music while you're doing it. You could do it while you're watching um, soccer games or just watching TV or taking a break from homework or taking a break from, from work. So I think it's one of the most underrated 
soccer training tools that most people aren't using, but I'd be very surprised if you're using this and you didn't mention it. So my guess is that you're not using one. And I think you should start to use one because it's going to help improve. Uh, it's going to make your practice more fun. And it's going to make you playing, you know, you're going to be more effective on the field. Um, this leads me to my next thought, which is, right, any time that you could dribble or any time that you could go for a walk, you could use a kick trainer. And any time you could go for a walk, you could use, you could dribble, right? So you want to invest in maybe a size one ball if you don't have one or just start bringing a ball with you everywhere you go, right? Muhammad Ali, he would train six days a week, all day, right? He was perpetually skipping, perpetually doing push-ups, perpetually doing shadow boxing. And I'm not saying, you know, you want to be the best soccer player in the world, but he, 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 he trained all day because he knew that to be great at what he did, he had to make it part of his daily routine. So I want you to take a perpetual, a soccer vacation and start bringing some type of training tool with you everywhere you go so that you can always be getting better, but effortlessly. I want it to be joyous. If you're not looking forward, if you want to, if you want to work hard and, and beat yourself down with your training, that's an option. But if you want to make your practice joyful, if you want training your soccer to pull you into the direction of be becoming a great player, let it be more zenful, let it be, make it fun, make it effortless. And um, the best way to do that is just to bring a ball with you so that you could dribble, juggle, and play all the time. Uh, so that's, that's the suggestion, bring a ball with you everywhere you go. The next thing you want to consider is, um, at every opportunity or just a few minutes a day, you might want to consider playing this barrel game. It's going to encourage effective juggling. So they say not all the best players, oh, I'm sorry, not all the best jugglers are the best players, but all the best players are always the best jugglers. So this is a, is a fun game that you can play with a partner or by yourself that's going to encourage. Um, it's going to help you improve your juggling skills rapidly with both your feet. So the way you play is, you just juggle the ball into a bucket or a basket or a barrel or a hamper. Any vessel can be used. That you, it's basically just a target. So with your right foot or your left foot, you uh, and then both feet alternating, then right thigh, then left thigh, then both thighs alternating, and then you finish. The last one is any all of your body parts combined. So it looks like this. Right? Get in the barrel. And then as you improve, then you start removing the balance. Right? Then you go right foot, then left foot. But in the beginning, you gotta be, uh, you gotta respect the process. It's like, how long do you give a baby from c crawling before it starts walking? I think it's, it takes a baby four to six months, right? To, to begin walking from crawling. So you can't just go n no balance with messy. You gotta start like any, you know, you gotta be truthful with your training in the sense that if you gotta start with a balloon in the beginning with a bounce, then start with a balloon. Make little, make the habit, you know, make the habit joyful because if you start to, if it's too hard in the beginning and mentally it's too hard to even start, then you're never gonna start. You just gotta start somewhere, right? So use a balloon, use a hacky sack, a bouncy ball, dog toy, just have fun kicking things into the barrel using a bounce or no bounce, right? If thighs are easy for you, get yourself going with the thighs. Right, you gotta have fun with it. And then you could challenge your friends and family at barbecues, picnics, right? It's just a fun game that you can do almost anywhere. It takes a few minutes. And so you wanna get in that habit of uh, fun juggling. Make it fun, make it joyful, make it effortless. Right, so those are some skills things that you can incorporate every day. The fundamentals, passing and shooting kick with a kick trainer, juggling, rotating different balls when you're juggling and playing the barrel game, and smaller balls gonna help improve precision, 
larger balls and heavier balls are going to improve power. And when you combine when you combine different size balls, you're going to combine that training of the precision of the power. It's going to make you more dangerous on the field. And the last thing, dribbling. There's one sequence in particular that you want to drill down every single day. It goes outside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. This is the Tom Turnbull dribbling sequence. And the reason why it's so effective is because it's easy to memorize. Since it's easy to memorize, it's easy to execute. And what happens is once it becomes muscle memory, it's going to allow you to get your head up faster, right? If you can get your head up, then that means you can make better decisions, better passes, better shots, uh, better everything. Um, the second reason why it's so effective is because you can combine it with other moves. It becomes, it turns into a connector. You go, right? You'll start to go outside, outside, inside, outside, scissor, or outside, outside, inside, outside, chop. It's, it's, it combines with all your other moves that you're gonna know to make you a more effective dribbler. So, um, that being said, all those skill things, right? Like, if you're really trying to improve your game and, and improve both your feet and your stamina, I would focus on the skill development because you're gonna, there's an aspect of, of strength and stamina that's involved in all these things. So you gotta start doing rotations of dribbling, juggling, and juggling, dribbling, and using the kick trainer to replicate passing and shooting all at the same time. So when you're doing focus practicing, I want you to do all those things at the same time in little rotations, two minutes juggling, two minutes dribbling, two minutes on the kick trainer, because there's a phrase that goes, neurons in the brain that fire together, or that, that wire together, I'm sorry, Neurons in the brain that fire together, wire together. So that means when you're training all those things at the same time in tight, in tight windows, right? It's like a soccer game. You don't just juggle or you don't just dribble. You don't just pass and shoot. You're doing everything, right? Take the ball out of the air. You dribble, you know, dribble towards goal, pass your friend. He packs back to you and then you finish on goal. So you kind of want to almost uh, uh, replicate the way you play, like the way, way you train. Two minutes dribbling, two minutes juggling, two minutes kick trainer and just do rotations of those things, right? Start to do, uh, uh, like it's a circuit, it's circuit training, but for your skills. So I'll leave you with those things. I know that was a lot, but uh, I, I'm 96% I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, all, all these things, there's things that took me 27 years to learn and I'm still learning, still growing. So reach out with any questions and I hope this helps. All right, thank you.